Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. I want to tell you, we've got a great guest here, and I want you to help me make welcome Danny Hutton from the legendary, the super legendary Three Dog Night that will be appearing here in El Dorado at our first financial music hall. And that's going to be coming up on November 20th. And Danny, first of all, welcome to the show. We are glad to have you with us, and thanks for spending some time with us today. Oh, uh, thank you, bud. That's yeah, that's Saturday, November 20th, and we're going to try to put some ear spank on everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? The, the first thing I want to jump into yeah. is the name itself, Three Dog Night. There's got to be a story there. Well, yeah, our, our, our managers, well, we, we came up with some kind of, we thought were very strange names, and our manager finally said, look, it's Friday, you go home, come back Monday, and have a name you all agree on. So we sat and wrote about 60 names down in, uh, in my kitchen table. And there was a magazine called Mankind, uh, and it's a historical magazine. And they had an article on the Aborigines in Australia who would do a walkabout, you know, when the, when the, when the men were like a certain age, 16 or 18, where they'd send them out at almost naked with nothing. Yeah. They, could, they took their dogs or whatever. So they had to survive for X amount of time. And so they they didn't, there wasn't enough stuff to even build a little hut. So they would use, you know, foxholes or whatever, and they used their dogs. So um, they used their dogs kind of as, to slept with them to keep them warm. So uh, obviously a three-dog night was a cold night, so, which has nothing to do <laughs> with rock and roll, but we thought, that's cool. You know, there's a number in it. There's an animal uh, yeah. And anyway, we, we brought it to the manager, and he was furious with us. He said, you can't keep that name. And we said, why not? He says, it sounds like a circus act. <laughs> what's what's Three Dog Night? And we, we uh, and you think about it today, how, how you know, how, how much the dog is used. Hey, dog! <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah, so, well, and, you know, it's like the zombies or the animals or whatever. You, you, later, you don't think about that, you, you think of the group, you know. So, it, yeah. and people kind of kind of remember it once once they know it. So, you know, looking back on everything, Danny, have have you ever just stopped and said to yourself, "This is a long, st weird, strange trip"? Yeah, but it, you know, it's almost like boiling a frog. <laughs> the frog doesn't know <laughs> if you boil, boil it in low heat. <laughs> but you don't realize until you look back, and it's like, my God. How did I? How did I do this? And how did I survive? And all the bad moments, the good moments. It's you know, it's been. It's ended up being a wonderful thing. I don't ever want to retire. You know, it's. it's uh, uh, I like I said, I'm I'm up in the Hollywood Hills, up in Lower Canyon, and uh, I, you know, I've got I, my my house here, and it's the. Uh, and I, I just love what I do. Got a got a recording studio and. My sons are sons are in the business, and uh, they they're performers also. So uh, I I just I I love what I'm doing. Do you remember what it was that led you into the music field? Into what? Into the music business. Oh, I, I, again, it was like boiling a frog. I I, I came I, I came from Ireland when I was five and went to Boston, and, and uh, I had a lot of uncles and aunts. And every once a month they'd have what they call a big night, and everybody would all meet at one of the relatives' houses. And usually everybody got up and they 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 did something. They they recited a poem, or they tap danced, or they uh, they played an instrument, or recited, uh, or sang. And it's kind of in my bones uh, as far as that. But as far as uh, taking musical instructions, I that was my musical instructions. Of all the songs, and there have been lots and lots of them, which, maybe a couple or three, uh, do you consider to be the, the real high points in, in your songs that you've done through the years? Well, I know this sounds, this sounds uh, as my mother says, self-praise is no praise at all. Uh, the, new, the new song on our new album, we have an album come out, coming out called The Road Ahead, and it's uh, a cappella with... Uh, uh, the band and uh, I would say, uh, you know, it's so hard to do a new song 
with after 21 top 40 consecutive hits right to, to do a new thing and we do it in the encore and we we didn't know what was going to happen with the song and we've never had a song that gets a standing ovation every night every night and uh, i'd say it's uh it's it's incredible it's called prayer of the children uh and because usually I would just say, look, well, I can't, I don't have a favorite. It's like having children and sure. all that stuff. But you asked, and uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, that that would that would be it. So that's, I mean, that's certainly one to look forward to. And I mean, you were talking about a long laundry list of songs. You know, I was thinking about just before you called uh, the song "Joy to the World," and for <laughs> for people who play Trivial Pursuit. That's one of those songs that has probably two or three stories attached to it, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, but it, it, when it was presented uh, to me, it's a real long story. I don't want to get into all the Hoyt accident. You know, he wrote uh, Pusher Man, and he wrote uh, he, he wrote all these other songs. Never wonderful. been to Spain. Never been to Spain. He's a great, great writer, uh, good friend, uh, and he he he'd written. Uh, he, he he was trying to do this little uh, Saturday morning children's uh, uh, show, and he wrote an album's worth of songs, and, and the show didn't happen. So he came over to the studio, and he, he's like a six foot two guy. Did you ever see Gremlins that movie? Sure, he was in there. He was a father. Yeah. In it, so uh, he comes. He came to the studio, and he's kind of a little sweaty, and he's going, "Well, what do you think of this?" And he's going. And I'm looking, looking the other guys going, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Is this? Anyway, we, we just said, we'll do it. Right. So we we uh, we did the song, and I th- I, we thought, well, you know, we did a pretty good job on the song, and it was so strange. So we had we had the album. <clears throat> we released. We didn't release that at all. We didn't think anything of it. So we released two other songs that were hits. And then we were going to move to the next album, and all of it. We we never we never after the trying to select our first uh, on our first album what the single was going to be. We stopped doing that. We said we'll just do the album. Let the public decide. Right. And we had DJs from all over the country just go. We're getting a crazy response to this song, and we were stunned. That really, <laughs> and I think it sold eight million singles or whatever. Yeah. It's just crazy, uh, and. Uh, I now really love this song because I know when we do that song, the joy, pardon the pun, in the room, because I, I know music kind of does a smell and music does right. that, where it brings back your memory. Yeah. You remember, I remember songs by other artists. I remember the exact moment where I was when I first heard it. Right. Uh, and that, that's one of those songs where people, it just brings back these wonderful memories. Uh, and, and the words are so positive. And they cover every, little kids like it because of the frogs and uh, Viet, Vietnam veterans, you know, the straight shooting son of a gun. Uh, it kind of covers, and, and drinking is about drinking. Yeah. Uh, it's, it kind of covers everything. It's, 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 it's kind of a very universal song. Danny, let me uh, just attach a little piece of trivia with this song or with the artist. And uh, you probably already know it, but if you don't, it's one of those things that will knock you off your chair. Um do you know the connection between Hoyt Axton's mother and another very famous song? Sure. Heartbreak Hotel. She wrote it. That's right. May Axton. Yeah, I know. A lot yeah, of, sure. A lot of people a lot of, don't know. A lot of people don't know that, yeah. 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 And I'm, I'm also thinking about another one that's a personal favorite of mine, and that's Shambhala. What's the story, oh. what's the story on that one? Uh, that, that came to us... Uh, uh, what what the hell? I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking out on the writer, uh, Daniel Daniel Moore. Uh, yeah, actually, he was over at my house and he played it. Well, we've done a lot of Daniel songs, uh, and uh, you know, Shambhala is a is a historical place. Actually, on our new album, The Road Ahead, we have we have a we have a picture of. Of uh, like a you know a Taj Mahal kind of looking place uh-huh. uh, with mountains and it's really Shambhala, way down this road, and then on this cliff we have uh, Jeremiah, <laughs> we call him Jerry, 
but he's like thin, skinny, with, with bell bottoms and a hobo stick and a thing <laughs> on his way to Shambhala. Uh, so uh, it's it's just kind of a, you know, one of the songs that had uh, had had uh, great great lyrics. Again, we we always did songs that were uh, up, try to do songs that were uplifting. We didn't do political songs either. Yeah. Either uh, songs about emotion or partying or just uplifting, and I think that's important. If you're coming to see Three Dog Night, uh, we're not going to do a bunch of lecture stuff to you, you know. Or we're not reporters going you know, to talk to you about a lot of political stuff. It's, it's time to just have two hours of leaving, and just like you had a nice, uh, great hamburger and fries yeah. and some dessert. Uh, we want you to leave, and uh, our comment, the comments usually are. My God, these guys are pretty good for their. They're good for their age, <laughs> and uh, and I didn't know they did that song. I didn't know. You know, yeah. twenty-one consecutive tough already hits in a row. That's a lot. We don't. We have to usually cut out a couple, uh, and most most groups. So hard to have a hit single to begin with. It's like lightning in a bottle. Right. And he, if you have two or three, that's that's good. But you know what? That's that's they're three and a half minutes long. That's about fifteen minutes of your show. Right. Then you got another hour. Sure. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? So we're lucky enough. We can just we can just hit hit them all. The uh, we have none of the keys haven't lowered the key in any song. Uh, and I sing a little higher than I did in 1971, which sounds crazy because everybody. And, you know, I've got a good friend, Elton, and uh, Billy Joel, and that stuff. They've lowered the keys. And uh, sure. that, that changes the track because the guitar player's got to do different. Everybody's got to kind of change. You know, it, it, it does subtly change. Uh, anyway, we sound like the records, I think, or better. Yeah. As yeah. my mother said, self-praise is no praise at all. So. <laughs> well, talking about the band, tell everybody, who is the band today? Well... A lot of a lot of the guys have been with us uh, for uh, for thirty years. When we started, uh, we started. And we had a, we had a couple of changes at the beginning, and after about the second or third year, uh, we had a couple of more changes. So we slowly morphed and, and changed over the years. Uh, but uh, my whole thing was to always be true, serve the song. And you've got to really, you really got to have, you know, you have no rookies allowed. Everybody's, everybody's got to know what they're doing. Right. Uh, and that's what we have. And Michael, our guitar player, wonderful Michael, he's he's taking a rest right now. Uh, he, he was with us from the beginning. So our 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 a guy in in eighty when Michael stopped for a while, our guitar uh, guitar player came in and played guitar. And uh, uh, then uh, he, Michael came back, so our guitar player switched to bass. Yeah. Uh, and now Michael's out for a little while, so now our guitar player, who's delighted, is back to guitar. And my son, Tim, is, uh, uh, is playing bass. And, uh, you know, they talk about nepotism and all that stuff, but he just kicks But You know, he can do that slap Larry Graham, Sly Stone stuff. He's, yeah. He's a wonderful... So uh, uh, I think we're we're as, as good as we ever were, at least. Uh, I, I'm really, I'm really, really, really happy with what we're doing. And I, I uh, I'm almost eighty, and I, 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 I have no plans on stopping. I, people say, "Well, you just get bored now," and I'm, just, I'm thrilled. We're yeah. I'm home. I'm home one more day, and I'm out for four and back and. Uh, it's just a, it's been a wonderful. Uh, I, I feel I feel very lucky. Performing is performing is the best feeling in the world, isn't it, Danny? Well, yeah, but and also music is one of those magical things. You know, people become famous and then they do TV series for seven years or ten years or they're movie stars until they're sixty or seventy. Uh, uh, but then the phone calls stop happening and all that. But music is one of those things you can do forever yeah uh, uh like a comedian can't come back five years later and do his old jokes right uh, you can come back five years later and people want to hear the songs you did like like 
they like they were. They didn't want you screwing with them. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let, well, let's do a medley. No, I want to hear this song. I, I grew up. I went to school. I kissed them on the first date. I got married to it. Uh, yeah, it's part. And it's magical. I don't think there's any other. There, there is no other art form uh, where you can do that. Your songs are part of the soundtrack of of uh, so many people's lives. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's uh, uh, it brings uh, uh, it brings back memory. That that and smell. I know it sounds funny, but if you go into somebody's house and you smell, sometimes you, yeah, it's, it's your grandmother's house. Yeah, you, you smell you smell the cookies. You oh, and it brings you back to that moment. And yep. I have that same thing. I remember listening to Little Richard. Uh, hearing one of his songs one time, just as I was turning the corner to go home, I remember making a turn to go home. <laughs> you know, it's it's very magical. It it is magical, and it's yeah. going to be a magical night, November twentieth on Saturday. There are lots and lots of people who can't wait to see you guys in concert again at the uh, First Financial Music Hall here at the Murphy Arts District. It's going to be an incredible show, and we are so looking forward to it. And um, just glad that you took some time to visit with us, Danny. Hey, one more little question before we sure. go. I noticed there was a picture. I was looking at some pictures down through the years, and uh, there is a picture of you uh, playing, and I don't know what year this is, but playing a, a Vox Superlynx Deluxe Sunburst guitar. Do you still have that? No, actually, I was a solo. I was a solo act. I was on five labels as a solo artist. Uh, up until 1965, and then uh, I was working for Hanna Barbera uh, Records. I was a an R guy there, and I used to do, I used to do all of these uh, all you know I, I I would do I play all the instruments on these records. I was a producer. I never was a, a an artist. Wow. Uh, and uh, uh, then I and I do all the instruments. I do the lead and do all the vocal parts, and then they would release it under another name. Of a, you know, they'd hire a band to, to lip sync what I did right. and call them something. And uh, uh, I did this one song, and they said, "Okay, we're going to uh, we're going to release this under your name." And I went, "This is crazy." Uh, so uh, uh, then they put me on the Flintstones. I was a cartoon on the Flintstones when Pebbles and Bam Bam the first time they started singing, and I was I was on TV with Barney uh, with them watching me. And then uh, uh, Vox uh, endorsed me, and then they sent me out on sure on on tour with Sonny and Cher. So that's nineteen. That would be nineteen sixty-five. And and you don't have a book written about all this? Oh no, I I I, I would be killed. <laughs> you... I know where all the, I know where all the bones are buried, <laughs> <laughs> all the bodies, and it's. If if I if people say why don't you write a book and it's like I just know too much stuff. You, I I think to write an autobiography you've got to really tell the truth and uh, yeah. Sometimes it can hurt hurt sure, people. Sure, sure. I mean they're good people, but uh, you know they're bad. Their moments have all that right. been, been bad, and I I would not want to want to do that. Well, uh, but uh, I'm I'm I've been I've been I've been very lucky. I've been around a lot of people and. You know, if you want to ask me, the genius in in music is Brian Wilson. Uh, he's he's he's. I was there when you know Pet Sounds. I don't know if you like Pet Sounds album, but uh, oh yeah, uh, one of the great albums. Yeah, well, he brought me. My manager brought me up to to his house to do uh, uh, to do uh, 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 Good Vibrations. Uh, the original Good Vibrations, not the one he did later on. Right. He did he did this one like. Uh, uh, Phil Spector, this big swimmy thing, but I became friends, really good friends with him. So I learned a lot uh, producing. It was it was Richie Podler uh, who did Born to Be Wild, and all. He was our producer. Uh, Bill Cooper, our engineer, and me. And uh, that's all the records we did. It was a, basically the three of us that did all those records. I was a studio rat, so I loved doing his stuff and i learned so much from brian i, I was best man at his last wedding so, yeah uh, uh it's uh um, it's been a it's been a great life well you know it's it's stories like that probably that that some people know who 
are coming to you saying you got to write a book but i understand um some of those are just best told whenever you tell them yeah. and and we are so thankful that you've had some time to visit with us and we're so looking forward to uh the first financial music hall show that you've got coming up and uh here at the murphy arts district it's going to be an incredible show and a lot of people really gonna uh just love seeing you there so we want to uh, say welcome first of all and uh, can't wait for the show uh all right wonderful i appreciate it Danny Hutton, our guest. Again, thank you for taking some time with us, Danny. Thank you.